Hey there! In this episode, I'm gonna build this. Here is the Raywell Camof Key A50 in 48 scale. It's pretty rare and it's from 1998. Actually, it's an Italy kit which boxed by Raywell. It has tons of accuracy problems, but I have not any other option in this scale. I'm gonna try to fix some of major problems of this kit using with some extra detail sets and scratch built parts. Of course, I'm gonna use this decal set instead of the kit decals. Anyway, let's get started. I am starting to the build with the fuselage and the cockpit parts as usual. The cockpit details are just horrible. I need to scrape them and replace with the PE parts from the Edward set. On the other hand, I am preparing the PE parts. This is an quite old Edward set and the panel parts are not pre-painted. Because of that I have to fix the old PE parts to their places before painting the cockpit. Of course I couldn't stop without adding some details to the cockpit. Some of them are from my spare box, some of them are scratch built. I'm cutting the excess pieces on the delicate parts with a saw. And I'm masking the canopy parts with help of a good light source. Ok, now I am ready to paint the cockpit. The white primer layer first. Now 
I'm building earlier version of Key A50. So I'm gonna paint the cockpit with blue, green and black paints. Now I'm painting the riser details of the PE parts with a grey pencil. I'm painting the remaining details with brush before applying gloss varnish. Let's secure what I have built so far with a gloss varnish layer. As I mentioned before, I have already painted the raised details on the cockpit. Now I am applying a light grey weathering wash on the recessed details. That works like a magic. Before the water-based wash has dried, clean the excess wash with moistened cotton bud. After the wash has dried, I am painting the remaining details with brush. As usual, I am gluing the film with Tamiya X22 to the PE console part. Finally, the cockpit is ready to glue to its place. And here is the result. Before gluing the fuselage house, I need to make some modifications.
The instruction book recommends glue these parts after gluing the fuselage house. But I'm gonna glue them at the first place to avoid lot of fitting and level differences problem. As I mentioned before, this is an old kit and you can't avoid these problems. But you can find easier solutions like a use a proper putty and handy sanding sponge. Do not forget to wear your dust mask while sanding putty dry. It will be easier to make it from scratch rather than trying to fix the exhaust parts. Let's do it. After scraping and cleaning the inside of the exhaust parts, I am gluing them. For sanding hard to reach areas, I use a piece of sanding sponge. I've cut these interior parts from a brass sheet. Now I'm shaping it. This is the easiest way to fixing scratch built metal parts in a plastic pipe without any fitting problem. I am flattening a 0.2 mm lead wire first. Then I'm using it for adding some details on the exhaust. And the detailing of the exhaust is completed. Let's continue with the assembly. It's time to detailing the gun place. The A-Rest set has contained only the main body of gun. I want to add more detail to the gun from scratch and from the spare box. Here is the ARES gun set. I'm gonna add the missing details with lead wires. I'm gonna sand and clean the rough details on this clear part using with a nail polisher and I'm gonna glue the PE details on it.
Let's continue with the assembly. The rotor blades look so flat. I'll bend them a little bit for getting realistic result. There are a few detailed parts for the rudder in the Edward set. I'm adding them to the rudder. I replaced the flat PE arms with brass rods and I used these connection point parts from the spare box. I'm adding more details I made from scratch using plastic materials. I'm adding the cable details using with different size of lead wires. Here is another part I need to fix. These needles are my main source of cheap metal pipes. In this build, this spare PE set saved my day. I used a lot of pieces from it. I'm finishing the modification process with a proper size of plus tube. The kit's rocket pot is completely wrong. It has 18 rockets instead of 20. Also, it's molded terribly. I'm starting with the pot. In this case, these needles are my best option again.
These parts are from the Edward set. I realized that I can use them as a paint mask for drilling holes on a plastic sheet in proper position. For a precise result, I start to drilling with smaller size of drill than the original size. After that, I'm expanding the holes with a needle which I used it for pots. Well, it's time to assemble. Not big surprise. It doesn't fit to its place as I expected. After sanding the excess pieces, the launcher is ready. Let's continue with the assembly. I made these handles simply bending the brass rods. Finally, the model is ready for paint. Primer first. Russian colors are quite challenging and there are a lot of suggestions on the internet. Eventually I made my own mixture and solved the problem with my way. I found another solution for the underside color. I'm gonna paint with a darker blue first, then I'm gonna apply post shade with lighter blue.
I'm applying black primer before applying metallic paints as usual. The decals were better than I expected. These both products were very useful at this process. Of course I applied a gloss coat of X22 before applied the decals. The decal carrier film is quite thick and rigid as you can see. And the Oscar goes to Mr. Mark Setter. That funny name decal setter helps a lot to avoid silvering with these. By the way, I have completed to paint all of these small details with brush before apply the gloss coat. After the decals has dried and painted the old parts, now I'm applying a protective gloss coat layer to all of them. Let's make a weathering wash using with oil paints and the Zippo fluid. After the wash has dried, now I'm wiping the excess wash with a soft cloth. Before the post shade weathering, I am applying matte varnish to the model. As you know, my post shade weathering technique is simply fading the primary color with white or uh, similar sand colors first, toning it with different colors, and finally applying a very thin layer with primary color. It's easier and clearer to show what I am doing than to explain it. Then, let's watch!
and it's time to apply the final post shade weathering with my favorite airbrush. This is also my favorite modeling activity. Finally, it's ready for the final assembly. And it's finished. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. Also, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section below. And do not forget to subscribe my channel if you haven't yet. Now, enjoy the pictures.